Hello and welcome viewers watching from all over, whether from around the country or around the world, watching from the comfort of your own home or even watching on a mobile device. I want to formally invite you to the nest, the home of the Pensacola Christian College Eagles. Hi, I'm Alvin Chapman alongside me, Brittany Paddock, my boss. And Brittany, excited to be back for another game against two of the best teams in the nation. Me too. Uh, this is definitely a game that I'm looking forward to uh, watching them play, seeing how they respond after last night's game. In today's nationally recognized matchup, the number two team in the nation, Pensacola Christian College Eagles, will be facing off against the Tigers from Grace Christian University. The Tigers from Grand Rapids, Michigan, are coming off a tough loss last night against Pensacola Christian, losing that game by being up 10 in the fourth quarter. They end up losing that one by, I believe, eight. Ashley Hook led the way with a perfect performance of 21 points, 13 rebounds, six blocks, and perfect from the field in the charity stripe. What are the Eagles gonna have to do to possibly slow her down? I mean, they just need to work on their defense, make sure they're stopping her, denying the opportunity for her to actually get the ball in the post where she's the most effective. Yeah, talk about effectiveness. She leads the nation in blocks. She also leads the nation in field goal percentage, and she sits right behind Lauren Alvarez in the nation with rebounds, averaging 12.4. In lighter news, Coach Jared Sellers in his 11th year coaching here at the college, picking up his ninth win of the season, sitting at nine and two, picked up his top, I was about to say thousands, that's kind of crazy, 200th career win, being the head coach of this Eagles ladies program. Yeah, uh, Coach Sellers has done an excellent job with the Lady Eagles, has really turned them into a winning program, and I'm excited to see uh, how he continues in that role. Yes, major congrats to Coach, not just an amazing coach, but an amazing educator as well. I believe you've had him for some classes. I've had him for some classes. The knowledge that man has is impeccable. Oh, definitely. As, that's, speaking of impeccable play, let's talk about Lauren Alvarez. What a game she had. She nearly picked up her second career triple-double. She had 23 points, 14 rebounds, and one steal shy from a triple-double. Lauren played an absolutely fantastic game last night. She started off really hot in the first quarter and knocked down a, a majority of her shots. And then defensively at the end, when her team needed her most, she was able to step in and pick up several key steals. She had nine steals contributing to a team and game high for the Pensacola Christian College Eagles, 26 steals. But that also resulted in 41 turnovers for Grace Christian University. Yeah, the the Lady Eagles did an excellent job of, turn, of forcing the Tigers to turn over the ball. Um, I'm interested to see if they can, t can continue that through today's game. Plenty of action awaits in this eventful matchup. Brittany, I can't wait for this one. Last time we, we had our popcorns. We were watching from the best seat of the house, one of the greatest games showcased here in the nation. But we'll be back shortly. But until then, please, viewers at home, for the second time in 2022, we would like to introduce you to our Pensacola Christian College, Ladies Eagles. We'll be back soon.
It's a passion that unites us. The heartbeat of everything we do. Since 1974, we've been building, reaching, expanding our limits. And yet today, one thing hasn't changed. Pensacola Christian College empowers leaders to influence the world for Christ. You only have one life. What are you going to do with it? This is a place where you can be empowered to fulfill God's calling and pursue your passion. I had told my pastor before coming here, I was like, ah, oh, you know, I don't really like school, but now like on my third year, learning is so much fun. Incrementally, we're ready to do more, we're ready to face more, and to say, this may not be the easiest thing I've ever done, but it's the most rewarding thing I've ever done. Teaching is communicating facts, but the bottom line for me with teaching is connecting the material so the students not only know it, but appreciate it, and also know how to use it. We have great faculty and they honestly inspire me. They'll constantly tell you, if you need something, come talk to me. You can have a really good teacher-student relationship. And that's one of the reasons why I chose PCC, is to have faculty that love God to help me further my spiritual walk with Christ. Faculty are saying it's going to take hard work and dedication to be the best at whatever you're doing for God's glory. Everything that I see here is Christ-centered. Why is PCC here? It's to change lives and make them more like Christ. They want students to make an impact on the world. I think their goal really is to change the world, and they do it one student at a time. More than two million tourists come to beautiful Northwest Florida every year for sun, sand, and surf. But Pensacola Christian College is another appeal on the Gulf Coast that causes 4,500 students to enroll for a different reason, to influence their world for Christ. Students choose from nine different departments with 59 programs of study and 32 minor tracks. Qualified faculty are available to assist students at every step as they pursue excellence. These students graduate to become employees at leading companies in their industries, such as Apple, NASA, Procter & Gamble, and the Mayo Clinic each one using their education to succeed in the workforce. Students stretch themselves outside of the classroom as well. On the court, the PCC Eagles fight to protect the nest in NCCAA basketball, volleyball, and soccer. Students participate in over 1,200 intramural athletic events a year, from basketball to tennis to rock climbing, broom hockey, and ultimate frisbee. And students raise the bar artistically as well, with more than 100 campus performances a year, from large and small dramas to band, orchestra, and three different campus choirs and singing groups. But most importantly, students get a chance to serve Christ in more than 80 ministry opportunities on and off campus, and ministerial students serve in over 25 local churches. One quality, Christ-centered education for one record-breaking, affordable price. 64% of students are employed on campus, earning up to $6,400 a year. And seven initial scholarships can further reduce total costs by $4,000. And continuing students have access to additional scholarships. Qualifying for the fourth year tuition-free program can cut costs by $8,052. 78% graduate completely debt-free and 94% are employed or in grad school within a year of completing their undergraduate studies. A multitude of experiences equals one amazing college. Pensacola Christian College, empowering Christian leaders to influence the world. Hello and welcome fans from all over. Hi, I'm Alvin Chapman alongside with the Sports Information Director here at the college, uh, not Alvin Chapman, Brittany Paddock. Brittany, super excited for this game. Just under a minute left to go. Let's go ahead and introduce the starting lineups for both teams. 
are going to be similar to the starting lineups we had yesterday to fill the guard spots for Grace Christian. Caves across at number three, who is top 25 in the nation in assists. And Emily Livey, who is the leading scorer for this ball club, averaging 16 points per contest. For the wings, Megan George and Ashlyn Wilkes. And to the man in the middle last night with a dominant performance, number 45, Ashley Hook. Who's going to be the impact player here for the Tigers? I definitely think you need to keep an eye on Ashley Hook, uh, using her height and everything else to her advantage, um, her high shooting percentage. We'll see if she can dominate today. Now let's go take it over to the Eagles bench over here who are heading southbound in just a couple moments to fill the guard spot. Number 14, Jenna Wolford. Number 13, Cindy McElhaney. Number 23, the speedy guard from Louisville, Texas. Leah Phelps, she just passed her career high of 22 a couple nights ago against Lowell. She tied it, actually, a career high, as she said, against LaGrange. And the field of forward, the senior duo, Sandy McElhinney and Lauren Alvarez, who's the impact player for that, with one second left to go. Keep an eye on Sandy and Lauren tonight. I expect big things of them. Let's go ahead and kick it over to Caleb Osborne. We'll be back right before the tip. Tonight's game is between the PCC Lady Eagles and Grace Christian University. The National Christian College Athletic Association is committed to the true spirit of competition and upholding the four core values of the game plan for life, love, integrity, faith, and excellence. We ask that each participant, official, and spectator join us in exhibiting these Christ-like characteristics and help create a positive environment in which to enjoy today's competition. At this time, please stand for prayer. Dear God, I thank you for the opportunity the spectators come to witness the, the competition that's about to unfold today, Lord. I ask that you give the players the strength and the endurance they need to play, Lord, and I ask that everything done here today would bring honor and glory to you. In your name I pray, amen. Please remain standing for the national anthem. Tonight's sport medicine coverage is provided by the Andrews Institute and Baptist Healthcare, the official sports medicine provider for Pensacola Christian College. Starting today for Grace Christian University, number three, Tasia Cross. Number 13, Megan George. Number 24, Ashlyn Wilkes. Number 33, Emily Libby. And number 45, Ashley Hoke. Grace Christian is led by Coach Ashley Vane. And now, your Pensacola Christian College Lady Eagles, starting tonight for the Lady Eagles. A junior from Athens, Tennessee, number 13, Cindy McElhaney. A sophomore from Mansfield, Ohio, number 14, Jenna Wolford. A junior from Louisville, Texas, number 23, Leah Phelps. A senior from Athens, Tennessee, number two, Sandy McElhaney. And a senior from Jacksonville, Florida, number five, Lauren Alvarez. The Lady Eagles are led by coach Jared Sellers with assistant coach Heather Sellers. Officiating for today's game are Chad Anderson, Lenise Hay, and Hannah Matherly. Thank you so much, Caleb, for those pre-game ceremonies. Brittany's super excited for this matchup. What a game we were able to witness yesterday. Yeah, that was definitely a good game yesterday. I love how close it was throughout the entire game. You saw 
both teams being super aggressive at points and doing what they need to to get back into the match. Ashley Hook and Sandy Macklin will be in the center of the court for the tip-off. What are you expecting either team to do when they receive it? I think both teams are going to start off by going super fast and try to get a quick bucket, um, but we'll see what happens. You mentioned turnovers was a huge factor in yesterday's game. Grace Christian with 41 of them as they win the tip. Get over to Libby. How do you expect them to take care of the ball as the Eagles go back, I believe, into a man scheme? They get inside to Ashley Hook, back to Megan George. They go right back inside to Ashley Hook, and she travels before she can put the ball on the floor. That was a great job by uh, uh, Lauren and Sandy right there. I mean, Lauren saw that Ashley was making that that spin move and immediately stepped over to prevent her from completing it and force that travel. Macklin, she brings the ball up the floor, being guarded by the taller defender, Ashley Hook. Holds on to the ball with 13 seconds left to go. Let's it fly from distance, and that's no good. Megan George with the rebound. She received National Player of the Week, I believe the first week of 2022. Averaging 17 points and six assists. She's averaging 12 points overall on the season. Last night she had 11 points and a number of huge three-pointers. Ashley Hook works inside, nearly loses the ball. Kicks it out to Wilkes, she'll try a triple. That's no good. McElhaney gets a hand on the ball and she hits the deck as well. I believe a foul picked up on Ashlyn Wilkes. That'll be her first. Already an aggressive match going in, I believe a minute into this matchup here, Brittany. Definitely an aggressive match. I mean, you can definitely tell our Lady Eagles are pretty tired after yesterday's game and how aggressive their defensive was. Um, but I definitely think, sorry, I was trying to figure out what was going on there on the court. I believe it was shot clock issues with the table. We got things going right back to normal though. Here's Leah Phelps receives three screens from her teammates. Beats her defender to the cup but can't finish. Here's Tasia Cross in transition. Met by three defenders, that's a steal. And a turnover for the Eagles. Lauren Alvarez with the steal. She collected nine of those yesterday and also a, a game high for the school. My bad, not for the school, but for the season. 26 yesterday. Eagles going back to that 2-2-1 press and it's working to their advantage. Forcing another turnover here for Grace Christian. I believe that's three in a row for them. Here's Tasia Cross with the ball. Coach Sellers has definitely not let up on the aggressiveness in his game plan. And I'm hoping that our Lady Eagles are able to sustain that throughout this entire game after we just played a game last night. No points on the ball a minute through this competition. Now on the brink of two minutes, here's Ashlyn Wilkes goes baseline off the rim, dances around, and it's good. She strikes first between both teams. The Tigers get on the board first. Here's Alvarez, dribble handoff to Wolford. Kicks a corner to McElhaney, wide open, takes a dribble inside. I believe Hooks possibly got a hand on that one. McElhaney takes it the other direction, goes up with her left side. That one's no good. Hooks with the rebound, tries to push the tempo. That one's batted out by Leah Phelps, the speedy guard from Louisville, Texas. You could kind of see where Cross was trying to go with the ball right there, and Leah was able to get a hand up. Here's Libby, wide open. She'll try a triple. No good. A hook for the rebound. Gives a second chance opportunity for the Tigers. Wilkes goes inside, throws it off the backboard. No good. But the insurance policy of Hook, once again, shows itself prevalent. She gets on the board first. Give her two points. She had 10 through three quarters and 11 in the fourth. McElhaney drives hard once again. No good. Wolfer got a hand on it. Her sister will try a triple wide open. No good. Wolfer gets another second chance opportunity to give the Eagles an alive third possession, and she gets fouled. That was a great job by Jenna being aggressive on the offensive boards, coming in, getting a hand on the first one, and then actually coming away with the possession on the second. They get it to Wolford. She loses her defender, stops in the middle of the paint, nearly come up with a three second violation. McElhaney nearly loses it on the floor for the ball. And Libby gets called for the pushing foul. This is a good job by Libby being aggressive, but Cindy was able to get in front of her, and that's why the foul was called. 
The Tigers travel great lengths to be here. The team from Grand Rapids, Michigan, standing at number five in the nation. Here is McElhaney on the taller defender, nearly loses the ball. Wolfer dribble hand off to Phelps. She'll take a dribble pull up. Then you better, love, you better believe in that one. Leah struggled taking that shot yesterday, but that is definitely her range, and I really want to see her put a few more of those shots from the free throw lineup in today's game. That's the first points on the board here for Pensacola. Megan George goes inside to hook. She thought about a jump shot, no good. Cross gets inside, hop step, finds Wilkes. Wilkes drives and finds Hooks. And Jenna Wolford with the offensive foul. I mean, we have talked about this before, but Jenna has the amazing ability to know exactly when to step in and take that charge, and you see her doing it right there. We really need her to step it up today and try to take a few more. The defensive showstopper from Mansville, Ohio. She was averaging about two blocks, not two blocks, but two charge fouls a game. That's Alvarez with another turnover in this matchup. Here's Libby, stops on a dime for a pull-up jumper, no good. Alvarez retrieves the rebound and throws it up top to Jenna Wolford. She stops on a dime for a triple, and it's good. Not the greatest shooting night last night for Jenna Wolford. About one for 11 from the field, but she gets on the board first for the Eagles. And Leah Phelps called the gets called for the foul. My apologies, ladies and gentlemen. Megan George for the inbound, finds Livy, tries to split through two defenders. Leah Phelps comes up with it. She had three steals last night, a season high as well, of 26 for the team, and she gets fouled on the way to the cup. And just like that, five fouls in the quarter, the Eagles will go to the charity stripe. The Tigers are going to be playing on eggshells for the remainder of this first quarter. Here's Leah Phelps, misses the first one. Phelps, a nominee for player of the week from the national level, knocks down the second free throw. Kind of ironic, the week when Ashley Hoke, not my apologies, not Hoke, but Hook won player of the week. I believe Leah Phelps was nominated. She was averaging 15 points throughout that entire week as well. Cross gets it past half court. Beautiful passing there by the Tigers. Livey secures the two. That's her first field goal of the night. Gives the Tigers the lead as well. McElhinney guarded by Zion Tatum as she checks into the game as well. Wolford tries to find Phelps, but she moved too quickly. Cross in transition, foul, and one. She goes to the bucket hard, head down, embraces the contact, and now she has an opportunity for the old-fashioned three-point play. I mean, that's definitely not something you want to give up on the Lady Eagles, in it? It was a good job by Sandy coming in and trying to be aggressive, but you got to make sure if you're going to go up and be that aggressive, you aren't creating body contact and making that foul. Cross gets on the board for the first time in this matchup. Also gives Grace Christian the lead in this game as well. Leave that as a shot clock violation as well. Not a violation, but an issue here at the table coming into the game for the Tigers. Number 32, Jada Reese. She had a big night as well off the bench. Seven points and eight rebounds. She normally averages five a contest. One of the team leaders from the rebounding category. McElhaney from way downtown, no good. Reese gets a hand on it. Finds Tatum and they're off to the races. Picks up her dribble in the half court setting and finds Reese. Reese back to cross. Zion Tatum on the right wing. Takes a screen from Hook. Floater in the air, no good. Hook with the rebound. That's thrown away by Jenna Wolford. Throws it up top to Leah Phelps, but that's rejected off the backboard. That was a great pass by Jenna, and Leah was able to get the ball up, but also good defensive effort by Reese. Turn move for Hook was no good. Here's Phelps, McElhaney inside, tries to find her sister, nearly loses it, but sets up a wide open Alvarez for a triple. That's no good. 
Here's Tasia Cross in the half court setting, guarded by McElhaney. Three minutes and 40 seconds left in this first quarter. Inside to Reese, outside to Tatum. She'll take a short jumper, no good. Hook is there, Alvarez with a hand on it. And will stay here with the Tigers. Torres into the game as well as Menzer. And also the freshman, Nikki Quest. Quist, my apology. Comes into the game, standing at 6-2, a freshman from Michigan. Beautiful. Baseline out of bounds play to get Quest wide open on the baseline. Stretches this lead to four. Wolford, Alvarez. Mentor wide open in the corner. Just misses. Alvarez with the rebound, goes up strong, and Quist gets the rejection. This sets up a baseline, out of bounds play. Opportunity here for the Eagles. Alvarez with the inbound. Mentor flashes and receives the ball. And finds Wolford, nearly loses the possession. She'll stop for another triple. Just rims out. Alvarez flies in and gets rejected by Quist. Eagles not granted a third opportunity to get some offense going. Here's George for the inbound, finds Tatum. Quickly to cross, that ball nearly goes out of bounds. Alvarez with another steal, that's her second. She'll stop on a dime for a triple, misses everything, McElhaney regains it. Gets it back to Wolfer's short jumper on the corner. And that hits the bottom of the net. Jenna has been low scoring the last few games and I really expect her to come in with a big night. Hopefully, hopefully today is that game. She has five early, had a triple earlier in the first quarter and a short jumper in the corner. Here's Cross guarded by Wolford, goes inside to Quist. Quist back to Cross wide open, finds George, hand in her face for a three, wedges inside the rim. Wolford finds Menser. Slows down the offense, kicks to Torres. She'll try a jumper. Normally doesn't hit those, but finds a way to find the bottom of the net from the short corner. So that was just a good dribble drive by Kristen. Able to get down and the perfect opportunity. Torres came out, Dishel and Torres had the open shot and made it. Monte Torres, the freshman from San Juan del Rio. The freshman studying pre-medicine. She has two games during this interterm season where she had five points and five rebounds. I mean, that's solid numbers. Um, I know Monse doesn't necessarily get a ton of playing time, but those five rebounds and the five points in a close game are critical. Torres on quest. Torres wins that battle with the rejection, and Menser takes it the other way. Menser with someone on her back, finds Phelps, she drives baseline, kicks it to Porter in the corner. Short jumper again, the same area where Wolfer hit one, she misses. Menser wide open for a three of her own, that misses everything. Despite that miss, the Eagles knock this game up with the Torres jumper on the opposite corner at 11, with a minute and 21 seconds left to go. Alyssa Gennetti, she's gonna to have to come out the game. Don't know for what specific reason, but coming back into the contest, Ashlyn Wilkes, the guard from Nashville, Michigan. Tatum, inside to Reese, Torres with the steal. Torres leads the way, bounce pass to Menser. Stutter step into the lane, finds McElhaney. Torres drives inside, finds McElhaney again for a short jumper, that's no good. Wilkes with under a minute left to go. She's met by Torres. McElhaney nearly picks up a steal. Tasia Cross on the top of the key. Not necessarily a little close to the half court line, but here's Reese in the corner. Torres playing great defense on Quist. And Quist gets the rebound, throws it back up, and she'll head to the charity strike. That's Nikki Quish, she averages 
1.1 points per game. Yet last night, I believe she had six. Actually scoreless last night as well, and misses the free throw. The Eagles with the opportunity to go back and get another possession before this first quarter, and she splits those free throws. If Quist, Quist, my apologies, not Quist, if her three on the contest, one field goal as well. Porter loses it. Wilkes on to the races. Wilkes stops on a dime. Torres gets a hand on it. Beautiful defensive possession by her. That was a great job by uh, Cindy, and, Cindy and Monse to get back and try to get a hand in there to prevent Grace from scoring. This gives Tatum an opportunity to possibly give Grace Christian an opportunity to score. Here's Wilkes in the corner. Five second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Libby getting guarded tightly by McElhaney. Phelps being a ball hawk somehow gets to it. Phelps step backs, drives hard to the cup. And she'll head to the charity strikes. That was a great aggressive play by Leah. She got a hand on it. Uh, thought Grace might have gotten it back, but Lee has stuck with it and was able to turn it into an opportunity at the free throw line. And not just great aggressiveness, but great persistence as well. It didn't seem like Tatum and Phelps had a shot to get that. It didn't even seem 50-50, but now this play ends up with Leah Phelps at the free throw line with eight minutes, not eight minutes, yet eight seconds left to go. She hits the first one, second one up in the air, no good. Wilkes with the opportunity to get a bucket in before the quarter draws to an end. She kicks a quarter to Tatum. Short jumper is good. <laughs> Zion Tatum gets on the board as the clock expires. And she also gives the Tigers the lead in this game as well. This game very similar to the game we seen yesterday, but we'll be back shortly. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Alvin Chapman alongside with Brittany Paddock. Here's McLean. He goes baseline and also gets the roll to fall. Cindy McElhaney averaging close to five points per contest. Going back to that 2 2 1 press. Here is Libby quickly double team. Mentor takes it away. Mentor gets past her defender. Can go coast to coast here. Here's the floater into the lane. Just rolls out. Torres with the rebound. She steps out of bounds on that aggressive play. Zion Tatum checks back into the contest with Megan George on the baseline to retrieve the play. She finds Hook, Hook to Wilkes. And Phelps with another steal. 
Creates a jump ball opportunity here as well. And it will be granted to the Tigers as they call a 30 second timeout as well. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as Zion Tatum inbounds the ball to Tasia Cross. Alvin Chapman, alongside with Brittany Paddock. Hook inside, kicks it back to George. Pump fake gets past her defender for a short jumper, no good. Torres with another rebound. Off to the races goes Phelps. She's moving like lightning speed. Mentor with the layup on the opposite side of the basket, no good. Porter nearly loses it. McElhaney regains it. Mentor collects it for a short jumper, no good. Megan George, she brings the ball up into the half court setting. Goes back to Hook. Hook turns on her defender and takes an extra step as well. That's a traveling call and another turnover here for Grace Christian. They already have eight of those so far in the second quarter. Here's Sydney McElhaney to Monse Torres. And Sandy McElhaney goes baseline, stops on a dime for a triple, no good. Hook wins that rebounding battle. The Tigers take it the other way. As a reminder, Alvin Chapman alongside with Brittany Paddock here. In another intense contest here, Brittany Eagles down by one. Tasia Cross with the ball. Yeah, this is definitely a close game. Um, it's probably going to be close the entire game, so we'll see what, how, we'll see what the outcome is. Bang, bang, play down low, hook slow to get up. On the other side of the floor, lucky roll falls for Phelps. Hook slow to get up, that might affect the Tigers detrimentally. She comes out the game for Nikki Quest. And Jenna Wolfer comes into the game here for Cindy McElhaney. Eagles going to that 2-3 defense down low. And here's Wilkes. Wilkes goes through five defenders, stops on a dime and finds George. George to cross, she pump fakes, gets past Phelps. And knocks down the short jumper, Tasia Cross. Skip pass all the way to Phelps, guarded by Tatum. She stops for a jumper as well, hit one in the first quarter. That just misses, but the Eagles get a breath of air as Megan Jordan bats the ball out of bounds. 30 seconds, time out. Yeah. Head coach Jared Sellers in his 200th win yesterday. He calls a 30 second timeout as we are currently down by one, 15 to 16 to score. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back fans from all over. Alvin Chapman alongside with Brittany Paddock in a tight game that we have so far. So far the Tigers up by one point. Here's Lauren Alvarez with the inbound. Gets it to Jenna Wolford, a lot of contact on that play. Get the ball, we heading northbound, Tigers possession. 
Gets it to cross, cross quickly to Quist. Here's Tatum. Tatum inside, finds Quist. She saves it, Torres with another steal. In transition, three-pointer for Alvarez. Flies through, but no good. McElhaney, hard drive to the cut, but Quist with the block. That ball will stay here with the Eagles, I believe. Alvarez did get a hand on that one. And the possession will be going with the Tigers. Eagles still down one. The score hasn't changed here in a couple moments here. And here's Megan George, finds Cross back to George. George to Wilkes in the full court setting. They have six, now five seconds to get it over, and they do. Quickly double team, steps through. And they go inside to Tatum, and that's a turnover. Even though the Lady Eagles didn't get that steal in the back court, they did a good job of using up a lot of time on the shot clock, and it, in the end, it did result in a turnover by Grace. Brittany, we mentioned turnovers was a huge factor in the game yesterday. Grace with 41 of them. They had seven in the first quarter. Yeah, the Lady Eagles are definitely going to look to have a repeat of that, be really aggressive on defense, and I, I am sure that on Grace's end, they had a good conversation about the number of turnovers they had yesterday. Speaking about conversations, what about Sandy McElhaney from different distance? My apologies. What a conversation that one is as the ball goes right through the net. That's her first three of the contest. Also her first points of the game. Her second try from long range as well. And that gives the Eagles back the lead. 18 to 16 to score. And another timeout called on the floor. We'll step aside briefly. My apologies to the fans at home. That's actually not a timeout. That will be Eagles possession on the sideline. I believe the um, Grease's coach was trying to get a, a timeout call in before that 10 seconds was up, kind of get a reset and get a pass in on the front side of the court, but she wasn't able to get it in time. Alvarez drives, Alvarez to the cup on the left side. Uses the backboard for safety there. That's her first point of the game. Cross in traffic. Torres with another steal. Off to the races. She drives hard to the cup. Off the glass and it's good. Torres has been playing absolutely amazing. Um, defensively, she's been stepping up and I believe she already has two or three steals. And they force another turnover here. Live ball turnovers has been the kryptonite here for the Tigers. As the Eagles stretch this lead now to eight. Cross tried to step through the defenders, which is a very good move to have. Go ahead and split the defenders and see if you can get the ball down and go, but she just wasn't able to get the ball down in time before her pivot foot moved. My apologies, the lead wasn't to eight, it was actually to six. In the corner, Jenna Wolford, she drives to the gut of the defense, finds Torres. Torres drives inside, spins off her defender, and hits Wolford. Wolford, she goes inside, a lot of contact, and finishes through traffic. Here's Wilkes with the ball, met by three defenders. Three seconds to get it over, and they do. And here's Livy, she drives hard. Reese goes inside, can't get the lucky roll to fall. That was a good move by Reese. She just wasn't able to finish. A lot of contact on that play for Phelps. Wolford on the floor, fighting for the ball. And I don't, I, don't, I, I don't know if they called a foul or a jump ball in that scenario. Jump ball. Coming in for the Eagles. They did call a jump ball. The Eagles will stay here with the ball. Leah Phelps getting some well-needed rest as she's been playing out of her mind its first quarter. Alvarez, another turnover, gets it right into the hands of Reese. She hardly had to move to retrieve that ball. The Tigers take it the other way. Under four minutes and 30 seconds left to go in this first half. Wilkes picks up her dribble, finds Tatum dribble, handoff to Livy. Livy drives. She pulls up a three from long range. Mid dribble, no good. Up by eight. Way to thread the needle from Sandy McElhaney. And Cindy can't get the lucky roll. 
The Tigers take it the other way. And Ashlyn Wilkes steps out of bounds before she can make a play. I like the pass by Grace, trying to get it ahead, get some quick points on the board. Just sometimes you aren't able to stay in bounds when the passes are coming so fast. Jenna Wolford with her inbound. She finds Cindy McElhaney, and she sets up the offense. Offense, my apologies. Torres with the ball on the top of the key. Goes to Wolford, a near turnover, gets saved. Here's Torres, she'll take a jumper! And what a first half, Monte Torres has been able to mount up today! Like I said, Torres has been playing amazing today, and I'm really excited to see if she can continue this throughout the rest of the game. She's one of the team leaders in scoring thus far. And that's an offensive foul awarded to Lauren Alvarez! One thing I love about that play, it wasn't necessarily a charge where she got to go and stand still, but Livy was just driving to the paint out of control. I mean, that was a great job by Lauren just to recognize what was happening and step in, take that charge. We talk about the versatility of this team, and we always mention Jenna when it comes to taking offensive fouls, but really, there are multiple people on this team who will step in and take that charge. Here's Torres, drives inside, kicks corner to Wolford. She'll try another triple, no good. Alvarez gets a hand on that one. I believe that is an off-ball foul award. It's a possibly Livy. Yes, it is to Livy. No, Megan George, actually. It's just an inbound play here for the Eagles. They get it to Torres, who's having a phenomenal first half. I believe she has six points, possibly eight. Kick to Alvarez, wide open from distance, no good. Ashley Hook recently checked back into the game. Her ankle was bothering her, and Alvarez uses the glass to get two. That was a great find by Jenna, able to sneak the ball through and get that pass to Warren. Skip pass, nearly taken away by Wolford. Wilkes with the fadeaway jumper, no good. Alvarez with another rebound. Sandy McElhaney gets by her defender. She has numbers, gets it to her sister, nicely off the glass and in. Very good ball passing uh, by the Lady Eagles to get that open shot, shot in the wide open layup. Stretches this lead to double digits. Monte, I believe her corner short jumper did. Here's some plays right now. Beautiful passing, taking advantage of the numbers, heading the other direction. Alvin Chapman and Brittany Baddick will be back soon. Welcome back, fans from all over Alvin Chapman alongside with Brittany Paddock. And Brittany, what a first half we've been able to witness, but now the Eagles in the driver's seat. This 2-2-1 press has been the Tigers kryptonite. The Lady Eagles have done a fantastic job of, of doing this 2-2-1 press. Um, it, it's been working well for them, forcing the turnovers that they need. I can see Coach Sellers pulling this out throughout the rest of the season. He has been using this press for the duration of this season. Wolford pulls another triple. And for two threes this afternoon, she now has seven. And I believe Alvarez picked up the foul as Tatum hits the deck. The intensity in this game is very similar to yesterday's, but the score says another story. Eagles up comfortably, I, I believe, 27. They go inside to Reese. Quickly double team, here's Tatum inside. Ball dribbled off her foot, but it will stay here with the Tigers. Actually a foul on the floor here. First team foul of this quarter here for the Eagles. Tacked on Cindy McElhaney. Three-point try was blocked. Hook regains it. Tatum off the glass. No good. 
Hook gives them another top opportunity. A floater there for Tatum, no good. Torres regains it. Torres to Alvarez. Alvarez 100 miles per hour towards the cup from way downtown McElhaney, no good. Alvarez with a second chance opportunity and off the dribble, she drains it. I'm pretty sure Lauren was feeling it on that one. I saw her get the rebound and go behind the three-point line. I knew right away she was gonna turn around and take that shot. That heat check three puts them up by 20. And another turnover there by the Tigers. Eagles up by 20, and what a game. The last bucket right there by Lauren Alvarez, hits it from distance, right off the dribble as well. Give her seven points in the quarter. McElhaney, wide open, back-to-back -back triples, no good. Her sister gets the rebound. Wolford, can she get a third? Yes, she can! Jenna is shooting the ball really well in this game, and the Lady Eagles definitely need to look to try to find a few more opportunities for her to shoot. Kenzie Rupert with the ball. She's guarded by Wolford. And she forces the jump ball as well. It will stay here with the Tigers. I mentioned earlier, Brittany, that the intensity of this game is similar to yesterday, but the score says a different story. The intensity is is definitely there. I think the big difference is just Grace has had some short shot opportunities that they haven't been able to finish, so if they can finish those, I definitely think they'll be back in this game. Beautiful footwork there by Reese. Here's Jenna Wolford, floater inside, no good. Reese with the rebound. The Tigers with two seconds left to go. Tatum with the half court heave to the cup, no good. And that's the half for you guys, ladies and gentlemen. What a game we've been able to see. Monte Torres having big minutes off the, off the bench as well as Lauren Alvarez catching fire towards the end of the half as well. Oh, definitely. Lauren and Monte have been two of the key components in this game, and hopefully they continue to play strong in the second half. Brittany, we hardly scratched the surface of what this game has to hold, but that's it for the half. We'll be back shortly, but please enjoy some promotional videos provided by Pensacola Christian College. We'll be back shortly. You can scroll through hundreds of photos, but to truly experience college life, you'll have to visit us for college days. During college days at Pensacola Christian College, you can get that experience. Attend an engineering class one day and an art class the next. Listen to experts who share your passions and see how everything from the classes to the people is centered on the teaching from God's word. And that's just the beginning.
Visit us for college days and experience what no photo can capture. A college dedicated to influencing the world for Christ. Want to get a head start in college? With Pensacola Christian College's online dual enrollment program, you can do just that. Open to juniors and seniors in Christian schools and Abeka Academy homeschoolers, dual enrollment students can take up to six online courses per year, all counting towards PCC college credit requirements. With three different options throughout the school year and summer and over 20 courses, choose to lighten your college load and, depending on your major, finish college early. You will be able to fit courses around your schedule, a perfect way to complete many of your general college education courses before you graduate high school and step foot on campus. To learn more about getting a head start on your education today, visit pcci.edu slash dual enrollment. You only have one life. What are you going to do with it? How are you going to influence your world for Christ? This is a place where you can be empowered to fulfill God's calling and pursue your passion. Working as a physical therapist, it is a ministry all its own to just build a relationship with the people. I mean, that's my ultimate goal is I want to help people get better. I want to go to law school, get into a cybersecurity program. That way I can incorporate both um, programming and law protecting companies from cybercrime. I love being around people and I love learning about people. And I knew that with nursing, it wasn't just about helping people physically, like it was helping them spiritually too. That's what's important in life. As I began to pray more, God, I have a huge decision to make. Where am I going to go to school? I only have one life. What do you want me to do with it? And he began to show me that what I enjoy doing can be used for his honor and for his glory. God led me to Pensacola Christian College to pursue my passion for finance through a biblical perspective. I had told my pastor before coming here, I was like, ah, oh, you know, I don't really like school, but I know I need to go for nursing, so I'm gonna go and I'll have to study really hard, and I just didn't really look forward to it. But now, like, on my third year, learning is so much fun, and I didn't feel like that freshman year. <laughs> I'll look back and I'll be like, man, I remember I used to struggle with that, and then maybe a freshman looks at what I'm doing and they're like, what are you even looking at? I'm like, this is easy stuff incrementally we're ready to do more, we're ready to face more, and to say this may not be the easiest thing I've ever done, but it's the most rewarding thing I've ever done. Last summer I did an internship in Germany in a genetics lab and I was able to use the techniques and tools I had learned in the labs here over there and it made so much more sense because I already knew what I was doing and why I was doing it. I think teaching is communicating facts, but I think the bottom line for me with teaching is connecting the material so the students not only know it, but appreciate it, and also know how to use it. My teaching isn't about me, it's about where God is taking each individual student down the road. We have great faculty and they honestly inspire me. Um, seeing all of these faculty members who have doctorates, you can definitely see what they've learned reflected through what they teach. They'll constantly tell you, if you need something, come talk to me. Um, I've had teachers um, other places, and they'll say that, but if you go up to them, they don't really want to give you the time or try to respond. And here, it's, it's just totally different. You can just have a really good teacher-student relationship. The faculty are saying, it's going to take hard work and dedication to be the best at whatever you're doing for God's glory. That philosophy will always work. Sometimes they'll ask us, what verse do you think would apply to this? How a verse would relate to a situation. Biblical worldview is seeing all of my life through what God has shown us in Scripture.
And that's one of the reasons why I chose PCC in the first place, is to have faculty that love God to help me further my spiritual walk with Christ. If my goal is to be in the will of God, it helps so much to know that uh, my teacher has that same goal. Everything that I see here is Christ-centered. Their main purpose is, we want you to see more of Jesus Christ. That is what I see in PCC. Why is PCC here? It's to change lives and make them more like Christ. I hope that I can just have a little part of molding and shaping them like the Lord Jesus Christ. They want students to come out of PCC and to make an influence and an impact on the world. I think their goal really is to change the world and they do it one student at a time. As president of PCC, I want you to know that we're committed to providing an excellent liberal arts education that's built upon the foundation and truths of God's word. We won't compromise on biblical principles and our purpose is to equip you for whatever it is God's called you to do. Make the most of this opportunity in life and choose the college that best prepares you for that calling. PCC has so much to offer. We're located just minutes from the beautiful sugar white sands and emerald waters of Pensacola Beach. We're known for providing the best education value among accredited Christian colleges. And we have great facilities and activities that'll provide memorable experience to your college life. So as you think to the future and think about choosing a college, don't just choose a college because of its location, near home or by the beach. Don't just choose a Christian college because it's affordable like PCC is. And don't just choose a college because your friends go there and it looks like a fun place to attend. Choose a Christian college because God's called you there. Because that place will empower you to influence the world for Christ in whatever God's called you to do. What makes you smile? Time with people you love. Making a difference at your work or ministry. Fun memories and the little things that make your day. Going to graduate school can mean giving up those things, but it doesn't have to. With an online master's degree from Pensacola Christian College, you can reach your goals and still be there for family, work, and ministry. Of course, earning a graduate degree comes with challenges like money and time. But with online learning, you can get a degree that's made for your schedule and budget, one that only costs a little over $10,000, with a flexible payment option too. And with online learning, you can learn anytime, anywhere, with classes that fit your schedule. Take the next step by choosing one of several master's degree programs, business administration, educational leadership, ministry, Bible exposition, and others. At Pensacola Christian College, you'll get a biblical perspective and insight from caring professionals and ministry leaders. So when you graduate, you won't have just a diploma. You'll have confidence to go further in your ministry or career, and you'll still have those memories make you smile. It's graduate school built for real life. Graduate school built for you. Hello and welcome back fans from all over. 
Wow, things happen once now with Brittany Paddock. With the score right now, 39 to 18. Pensacola the Christian College against Grace Christian University from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Brittany, what a game we've had. The intensity is definitely there, but the score definitely says a different story. I agree with you completely. Based off of the intensity, you would not think that the Lady Eagles were up by 21 points right now, um, but they have just done a fantastic job on the defensive end and once again forcing those turnovers and eliminating, uh, I should say, contesting shots that Grace is putting up. Jenna Wolfer, she's the high man between all scores between both teams as well. 13 points and three of five from distance. Jenna has been playing fantastic on the offensive end as well as the defensive end. Um, several three-pointers. She's finding her shot, finding her groove, and really filling that void when it, players like Sandy and Lauren may not be hitting as many shots. Speaking of filling in the void, let's talk about Monte Torres, the freshman off the bench. She has six points, four rebounds, as well as three steals. Possibly could be a career night for her. Monte has been playing fantastic. She was just the spark off the bench that the Lady Eagles needed, and I could see her picking up a lot more minutes in the second half. Tasia Cross, she's the leading scorer with five points for the Tigers, but everyone else pretty much under. They still have 17 turnovers as well. They had seven in the first half, 10 in the second. Yeah, the, the Tigers, Tasia has been playing pretty well. Um, I really expect them though to really focus on those short shots. I expect people like Reese and, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought, and Hook and hook to step up and finish a little more closer to the rim. Grace Christian currently down by 21, but we see they are a capable basketball team to be competitive. Yesterday's game, they were down for the majority of the contest and came back and were up by as much as 12, went on a 12-0 run at the end of the fourth, uh, towards the middle of the fourth quarter, actually. What do they have to do in this contest to be competitive? They really need to hone in on their offensive side. They've been playing well defensively, but offensively, they have to eliminate the turnovers that the Lady Eagles have been forcing and then really focus on finishing finishing those short shots. The Tigers so far not really shooting as well. Also, from the field goal percentage, they have 29%. Haven't hit a single three as well in this game. But on the other side for the Eagles, they're pretty much shooting at their average, just a little bit over their field goal percentage at 34, shooting 33% from distance. Half of those threes behind the hand of the defensive showstopper from Mansville, Ohio, Jenna Wolford. Let's go ahead and get things started. A fresh 10 on the board. Our normal starting lineups on the floor. Here's Lauren Alvarez. We mentioned yesterday, Brittany, that we have practically five ball handlers on the floor at one time. We do, and it's not just our five on the floor. Everybody on our bench does a good job of handling the ball, and that was a fantastic play to start off this half with. Sandy with a wide open layup. Sandy McElhaney with pretty much no one around her, and Wolfers makes the steal happen as well. McElhaney gets her five in this contest, only one three. Had a little bit of shooting struggles in that first half, shooting one from eight from the field, and one from five from distance as well. Here's Cindy McElhaney, brings the ball to the left wing. Has Ashley Hook on her. She drives on her defender. Too strong off the glass. And the Tigers just throw that one away. I mean, that was that was a great move by Cindy right there. Seeing that mismatch with her maybe a little more speed than Hook. I would have liked to see her start that, that quickness closer to the three-point line instead of the free throw line and allow her to create a little more distance to lay it up. Alvarez with the inbound in the short corner. Here's Leah Phelps, guarded by Megan George. Cross playing tight defense on Alvarez. McElhaney in the corner, drives inside, nearly loses the ball. And I believe Wilkes is gonna come up with it. Yes, she does. Lively with the ball, gets it back to Wilkes. And Alvarez with another steal. Give her three on the contest. She had a career high of nine yesterday. And Jenna Wolfer once again in the corner, catching fire. Give her 16. Thirty-second timeout on the floor here for head coach Ashley Vang. She went to the Final Four last year and also won her region her first year with this program. We'll step aside real quick, but please enjoy some highlights provided by our video department.
Welcome back, fans from all over. Alvin Chapman alongside with Brittany Paddock. You just saw a Jenna Wolf for three, give her 16 on the game. That corner shot is Jenna's shot, so anytime she's open in the corner, the Lady Eagles need to pass it to her. Great job for Cindy McElhaney, not drawing the foul, getting in the driving lane of Megan George. Jenna Wolford, one point shy of her season high. Great high low look there for the Tigers. The ball did not even hit the floor, but Wolford with a strong rebound, taking it the other direction. She finds Leah Phelps. I believe Wybie hits the deck as well. That's Sydney Macklin who reaps the earnings. I love that play by Leah going in quick quickly and hard and then just the set and stop just enough to throw up for defenders and leave a wide open Cindy on the other side. Here's Cross deep in the corner. Libby works on her defender. That's no good. Alvarez takes it the other direction. Wolford in the corner guarded by George. Great escape dribble. Sandy McElhaney from distance. What a shot by her. Give her five in the quarter. I mean, we talked about how Sandy hadn't hit a lot of shots from distance in that first half, but the thing about Sandy and what makes her such a great player is that she doesn't let a single half or quarter define her. She may be dry one half, but she could come out and score 20 points in the second. Phelps, McElhaney, gets the lucky roll to get in there! Give her four on the quarter and eight in the game. And head coach Jared Sellers and his Lady Eagles sitting pretty against a team that had a tight competition against them yesterday. And Cross walks away with the foul. My apologies to travel. Zion Tatum, she comes into the game here. As well is Reese. And Pensacola Christian will take a 30 second. We'll step aside for 30 as well. Welcome back, fans from all over. Alvin Chapman alongside with Brittany Paddock in the lopsided victory. Well, not victory because the game's not over, but matchup we're seeing thus far against the team. That was a dogfight against. Here's McElhaney inside. Great hop step to the hoop. This is exactly the way the Lady Eagles need to start out this first half. They had a great run at the end of the, the, the first half, and then they needed to come out aggressive in the second half, and they have done exactly that. McElhaney wide open. Give her another two and also give her nine in this quarter. She had many shooting struggles in the first half. One from eight from the field as well as one from five from three. But she already has a triple in this third quarter as well as three field goals. Now the Eagles sitting comfortably right now up by 37. Twist to inside, left turnaround jumper good. Not jumper, but hook shot. That's the first point for the Tigers all game. Strong look there from Jenna Wolford, and she'll go to the charity strike. Jenna Wolford, the sophomore from Mansville, Ohio, averaging eight points per contest. Shooting 73% from the free throw line. Gets the first one to fall. She ties her season high, and right now she surpasses it. She has a career high of 21 points from last year's contest against Tacoa Falls, and Holland Geisler checks into the competition. That's her first action in this game here tonight. 
she comes in for Lauren Alvarez. Monse Torres, she comes to the table. She had six points, three steals, and four rebounds last night. Third opportunity for the Tigers, and Nikki Quist will head to the free throw line. Jenna, Jenna. There was just a lot of opportunities that the Lady Eagles gave Grace right there. Um, they really need to put a body and box out on uh, these taller players from Grace because that's the only way they're going to get the rebound. Quist with the free throw up, and that's no good. She had three points in this contest. My apologies, three points in that first half, five total in the contest. With the free throw, she can make it six, and she does. She already surpasses her season average. Normally averages about one point per contest. She has six so far in this competition. Phelps drives into traffic, and that's rejected by Reese. Phelps tries to make up for the miss, for the missed basket. I was about to say mistake. She makes she tries to make up with the missed basket with the foul. Kenzie Kendall checks into the contest as well for Sydney McAleen. Still sitting in a 2-2-1 press. Alyssa Janetti finds Tatum and they're off to the races. There's Janetti. Tatum. Inside to Reese. Reese drives on Torres. Off the glass, no good. Quist is there for the layup. Quist doing everything in everything in this third quarter here for the Tigers. And he also forced a turnover as well. Quist with four points here in this quarter. Seven on the contest. Janitti, corner to number 11, Kenzie Rupert. And Kenzie Tindall picks up the foul. That's three free throws here for Rupert. The sophomore from Wyoming, Michigan, standing at 5-3. She'll head to the charity strike. First attempt up for Rupert. Finds the lucky bounce and it's good. Rupert getting her first minutes between these two contests here down in Pensacola. Second attempt is up, no good. She'll be receiving three free throws since she was fouled beyond the three point arc. Last attempt is up and she misses it. Quist with the rebound. Inside to Reese, falls through her fingers. McElhaney retrieves it. McElhaney throws it away in the hands of Quist. But Phelps retrieves it. Phelps tries to dribble through three defenders. Janitti on the ground. My apologies, not Janitti, but Rupert on the ground. And a little fire on the defeat here of Grace Christian University as the reserves do a lot of work here in this third quarter. Yeah, and Grace has come out and played more aggressive than uh, they did at the beginning. To start the quarter, it's exactly what the coach would have wanted to see, and they forced several turnovers by the Lady Eagles. The Eagles up by 33. We'll step aside shortly as Grace Christian University calls a quick 30-second timeout. Grace Christian University taking the ball out on the sideline. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Mitch Chapman alongside with Brittany, my bad, Brittany Paddock, the sports information director here at the college. Quist inside, blows the layup, second chance opportunity, no good. Kaya still brings the ball down. Nearly throws the ball away, and she does. Back-to-back -back turnover here for the Eagles. 
Sets up another sideline opportunity for the Tigers. Holland did a good job of getting that rebound on the on the second chance, but the first thing she did was dribble into the corner, and that's not what you want to do. That creates the, the opportunity for the opposing team to trap you. She needs to go straight towards our other end of the basket to prevent that. Quist being a bully on the boards. Give her six in this quarter. Well, surprising her regular average as well. Here's Tyndall. Finds McElhinney. Torres, she'll take another long jumper. That misses. Phelps keeps that one alive. Janitti with the rebound. Tatum, she trips over her foot. Yet Phelps gets tacked on with the foul. Head coach Jared Teller looking to make a number of substitutions here for this game. Aiken makes her first appearance of these past two games. McElhaney as well as Lauren Alvarez comes into this competition. Out comes Tyndall Geisler as well as Sandy McElhaney. With three minutes and 45 seconds left to go in this contest, the Eagles are up by 31 points total. Reese skips it over to Janitti. She tries a short jumper. That's no good. Quest another rebound, and she'll head back to the charity strike. The Lady Eagles have got to start boxing her out. She's so much taller than them, they need to get a body on her, push her out of the lane, do not even give her the chance, or at least create the contact to where if she goes for the ball, there's the opportunity for a pushing foul to be called. Janitti with only one rebound in that first half, splits the first free throw as well. Be excited to see after the second, the third quarter stats to see what her rebounding statistic would be. She splits the free throw prayer. Macklin, guarded by Tatum, full length of the court. Finds Phelps. Alvarez gives a screen. Phelps throws it up. Can you spell circus? What an acrobatic finish there for Leah Phelps. That was a fantastic finish by Leah. Was able to get the ball over the defender and somehow got it to go in. Tatum nearly loses the ball, drives hard on her defender, ends up in the hands of Lauren Alvarez, but she was the last person to touch the ball before it flies out of bounds. Gives the opportunity for Zion Tatum, the junior from Grand Rapids, Michigan, to inbound the ball. Here's Reese, great pump fake. Jump shot towards the basket, and that rolls in here. Reese was a key component in Grace staying in the game yesterday. She had a lot of solid finishes around the basket, great moves, and if the, the Tigers want a chance to get back in this game, she's definitely gonna need to step it up. The Tigers force another turnover. Here's Janitti. Wolford, she comes back to the table. She leads all scores with 18 points. Surprises her season high of 17. She has a career high of 21 that she received against Tacoa Falls last year in December. Reese works inside, off the glass, no good. Third chance opportunity, forces the jump ball and it will stay here with the Tigers. Coming in for the Eagles, number 14, Jenna Wolford. Wolford, she comes into the game for Leah Phelps. An aggressive game she's been able to play so far. Yet the Eagles still stay a lead by 30. Quest with the inbound. Skips it over to Rupert for a three. That misses everything. Janetti with the second chance opportunity. That misses as well. Wolford with the strong rebound off to the races. Alvarez ahead of the pack. One man to beat foul and one for Alvarez. Let's see that one again. Beautiful job by Alvarez, beating everybody to the punch and going up strong on the left side, finishing, giving her an opportunity to score two. That was a great job by Lauren, finishing through the contact. That is not an easy play to make. People don't realize how, how hard that contact can be and it finishing on her weak side as well. Another opportunity and she knocks it in. Lauren Alvarez. A minute and 56 seconds left to go in this third quarter. Alvarez with another interception. Looking like a free safety playing football, taking away a lot of snags. 
Eagles still up by 33. Due to the Lauren Alvarez foul, old fashioned three point play as well. And here's Wolford. Wolford dribble handoff to Torres. She had a big first half, goes inside to Alvarez. Works on the smaller defender, no good. Torres comes down with it. They try to go inside to Aiken, Aiken loses it. And here's Quist. Quist finds Tatum. I don't think there's any starters for the Tigers in the contest right now. Here's Rupert for a triple. She tried a lot of them and she gets that one to fall. That was a good shot by Rupert. Able to finish despite the Lady Eagles trying to contest it. Didn't let her bother her and drain the shot. McElhaney, tough throw to the basket. McElhaney comes down with it. Jump ball opportunity, I believe, will be awarded to the Eagles. Actually, that might not be a jump ball. We'll see what the officials come up with. A number of substitutions coming to the game. Kristen Hentzer, as well as Amber Porter. Torres checks out the competition as long as well. My apologies with Sandy McElhaney. Aiken inside to Alvarez. And she's fouled on the play. Under a minute left to go in this contest. Eagles up by 30. Porter to Wolford. Alvarez on a smaller defender, kicks it to Menser. She'll try a three. No good. Alvarez somehow gets the ball. Great spatial awareness by her. Pushes the lead to 32. I think Amber might have gotten a hand on that and tapped it straight to Lauren, and Lauren was right there ready to finish. Eagle sitting back in a 2-3 zone. Carissa Aiken, the man in the middle. Quist inside. She skips it over to Tatum. Tatum, short jumper on the baseline. Cuts this lead back to 30. Run slow, run slow. Here's Wolford with the ball. Gets past her defender. Actually, she doesn't. Seven seconds left to go, and she's fouled in the open court. And she'll head to the free throw line as well. Jenna Wolford with the opportunity to add on to her season high. She so far has 18. And what a season she has so far. She has eight points per contest, 73% free throw shooter. Gets that one to roll in there. Another try for Wolford. That misses. She'll sit at 19. Alvarez with another rebound. Two seconds left. Menser at the buzzer. And that almost gone through. Eagles up by 31 at the end of the third quarter. One more minute of regulation. We saw Grace Christian University come alive last game in the fourth quarter where they exploded for 12 straight points. Most of those points in that last game came from Ashley Hook. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is you can never count a team out. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, the Lady Eagles could go dry in their shooting, and Grace could come out on top. You just don't know what's going to happen. So at this point, they're focusing on, on one point at a time, one play at a time. Ten minutes left of basketball here tonight. We'll be back shortly.
Welcome back, fans from all over. Alvin Chapman alongside with Brittany Paddock. Brittany, the Eagles up by 31, sitting comfortably. But we remember the fourth corner yesterday for the Tigers where they exploded for a 12-0 run. Yeah, I mean, like I mentioned before, we went on the quarter break. You can never count a team out. You just don't know what's going to happen. All it takes is a few people getting um, getting a, uh, getting hot and going off for a few shots. Porter gets called for the traveling violation, gives the ball right back to the Tigers. Janiti with the ball on the top of the key, gets it to Tatum. Once again, the starters that begin this game no longer in this contest. Here's Janiti for three, no good. Quist tried to get the rebound, yet slipped through her fingertips. Quist with a big third quarter. She has 11 points so far in this game, as well with eight rebounds. The Lady Eagles have got to do a better job of boxing her out. So, they, so Grace doesn't have the second chance opportunities. They were very close to having that just there. That's a hand checking call on the Tigers. Creates an inbounding opportunity for Lauren Alvarez. Alvarez. Gets Wolfer on the home run play. She kicks it to Porter. She wasn't expecting that one. It's that play to fall. Okay, I'm not sure if that was supposed to go to Carissa coming in or Amber Porter, but either way it worked out and the Lady Eagles got the bucket. Porter, she scores first in this fourth quarter. High-low opportunity. That's a foul on Alvarez. Number 23, Alexa Borgman. She hits the deck hard and sets up an opportunity for a sideline, my apologies, baseline opportunity. Borgman takes a jumper, no good. Porter secures the rebound. Porter finds Alvarez. She's heading down the speedway with the 100 miles per hour behind her, and she gets the layup to fall. Give her 14 tonight with 11 rebounds and also four steals. Tatum, she'll try a triple. Uses the glass for safety. Cuts the lead to 29. The other direction. There goes Wolford and she ties her career high. Grace did a great job when I'm hitting that, hitting that three. But then they all just kind of stood up there and Jenna knew what was happening, happening and immediately took off and Lauren was able to find that pass. That's a block by Porter. Mentor takes the other direction. Dribbling through traffic. Stop and go dribble by her. Here's Alvarez wide open. Why not shoot it from distance? She misses it. Tatum gets a hand on it. Wolford comes down with it. Here's Menser wide open. Plenty of space to operate. And the sophomore from Chester, Virginia finds the bottom of the barrel. Kristen's been taking those shots all night and it's nice to finally see one fall for her. Quist, she gets the free throw extended jumper. Give her 13. Both teams making to make basically hockey substitution and Quist with the rejection. And that's a technical foul call on the play by Alexa Borgman after the double foul was distributed by the center official. Warren Alvarez will be heading to the free throw line to hit the technical foul with free throws. And nothing will be happening afterwards from the double foul between Aiken and Borgman. Because after a double foul is hit, nothing gets called. There's Alvarez with another free throw. Give her 15. Alvarez again for another free throw. She knocks down both technical foul free throws. Eagles, two, Hockey substitution made two, on the play two, here. Everybody out the contest, two, but making her first two, minutes here tonight, Katie Irwin. I didn't even see her get to the table. The freshman from Pensacola, she was a star over at the academy as well. She makes her first minutes not over, not only for this two home game stretch, but over 
this contest as well. Mentor finds Phelps, steps on her defender. Torres inside, and she travels. She had the right idea, trying to use her pivot foot to get through those two defenders. Just sometimes when you're doing that, it's really hard to keep your pivot foot still. Um, that time she just happened to move it, and that's why the travel was called. Lighty with the ball on the top of the key, cross wide open for a three, and she finds the bottom of the barrel and also crosses, not crosses double digits, that gives her two points away from doubles. As the Eagles still up big, McElhaney tries one from way downtown, no good, cross taking it the other direction. Asia Cross drives hard inside, loses the ball, and Sandy McElhaney with the snag. Baseball pass intended to Leah Phelps. That's snatched out the air by Ashlyn Wilkins. It was Wilkes, there. my apologies. The pass was definitely there. I think Sandy just might have seen it a little late and was trying to get it through, just couldn't quite get the pass to Leah. Libby with the three, no good. Wilkes with the second chance opportunity. Floater in the lane, no good. Reese. Works down low, foul on the floor before the shot. That will be a baseline opportunity for the Tigers. Tigers still up big, 34 is the deficit. And here's Megan George, back to Libby. Three point try in the corner, no good. McElhaney with the rebound. Cindy McElhaney finds her sister. Back to Irwin. She dribbles it to the corner and finds Phelps. Phelps has her defender doing dance moves and finds Cindy McElhaney. She drives hard to the cup, off the glass, no good. Here's Tasia Cross taking it the other direction. Five seconds to get it over and they do. Libby, hop step inside, hard at the rim, no good. Earl with the rebound. Phelps loses her defender, goes up strong, and she'll head to the free throw line. Reese a little bit late there for the deflection. Yeah, it was a good move by Leah. She was able to draw that contact and go to the line. Obviously, you'd prefer to finish it and get the end and one, but sometimes there's just no, no chance with how hard the foul is. Leah Phelps averaging 12 points per contest. She knocks down the first free throw as well. Give her nine tonight. She knocks this one down as well. She'll get double digits. We mentioned earlier during the pregame show that she tied her career high that she set against LaGrange College with 22 when she played Welch, a team also in the Mid-East Conference of the NCCAA, the same conference that Grace Christian plays in. High-low offensive action, down low for Reese, that's no good. Torres taking the other direction. Baseball pass to Phelps, right on target, and Phelps with the earnings. Eagles up by 38 with five minutes left to go. Here's Tasia Cross, finds Libby. Libby tries a triple. If you don't, at first you don't succeed, try, try again. That's been Libby's motto all night. She gets her first three of the game. She has five. Inside goes Phelps, hard finish towards the goal. Torres goes up strong and she gets fouled. Torres with a phenomenal second quarter in this game where she got the majority of her points. She has six points, four rebounds, three steals as well. Shooting pretty, pretty solid from the field as well. Three from four, she misses the first free throw. The freshman from San Juan del Rio, Mexico. Here's a second chance opportunity for her to convert on and she splits the free throws, give her seven. And that possibly might be a season high for her this year. I, I believe it is. I think it may even be a career high for her. She, she's been playing absolutely phenomenal tonight. Wilkes three, no good. Reese there for the rebound, can't finish. She'll get another opportunity. That's no good as well. Wilkes tries again, no good. Irwin with another rebound. She secures two in this game. Here's Phelps, she's met by George. Sets up a sideline opportunity here for the Eagles. Another hockey substitution made by Coach Ashley Vaughn from the Tigers. As they're now down by 36. Inbounder to Torres. She hits the deck. Tatum tries to recover it. 
She hits it last as well. Just did a checkup on that stat. That's actually not a season or career high for Monte Torres. She had eight points against Johnson University when the Eagles scored the most points in the nation. And she walks away with a traveling call as well. Monte Torres, she has seven points so far, three steals, and also a number of rebounds in this contest. Brittany mentioned that was her career high. That actually wasn't her career high. It's eight points. If she gets another field goal, there's plenty of time left in this basketball game. Here's Reese down low. She finds Quist, and Quist making it work down low. She has 15. McElhaney finds Torres. She can take a triple from here. That just rims out. Reese working down low. Huge acrobatic play to get the ball. And I believe that is a jump ball. No, a double foul here. Not a double foul, actually. That's a full timeout called here by head coach Ashley Vaughn. Young Geisler and Mentor check into the Menser check into the game here for the Eagles. This is a 60 second timeout. We'll step aside, but please enjoy a number of highlights provided by our video department. Welcome back, Eagle fans from all over. The Eagles up by 35. My apologies, 34 here in this contest. And the Tigers taking the other way. The intensity was there this entire game, but the Tigers just can't seem to score a game where last night they only lost by, I believe, single digits. They're down huge. Bang, bang, play down low on the low block. And the Tigers will gain possession. Tatum with the inbound. Gets it to Rupert. Janetti with seven seconds left on the shot clock. Finds Tatum for a three that misses. Great board down low, no good. McElhaney regains it. She throws it up top, but that's stolen away by Janitti. I know the Lady Eagles are up right now by 34 points, but there seems to be a little bit of sloppiness happening that I can tell Coach Sellers isn't too happy about. Some passes that they shouldn't be playing. Hopefully they can clean that up and just keep this lead for the next three minutes. Quist down low. She's having a big second half. Give her 17 on the night, leading the scores for Grace Christian. The Geisler's three, no good. Tindall heads back to the table. Tatum, she'll try another triple. That misses. Another rebound there for Cindy McElhaney. Menser with the ball. That's taken away by Janitti. Janitti to the cup. Nearly stolen away there by McElhaney. Mentor holds it. Behind the back goes Mentor. Long pass to Geisler. Young by herself, short corner, no good. McElhaney tips it to Irwin. Irwin drives inside. Wide open Mentor gets past her defender. Gets it to McElhaney on the short corner, no good. 
And that ball will stay with Grace Christian. That looked like a toss-up between the Eisler as well as Tatum, but the official gives the direction over to the tie to the Tigers, my apologies. I was about to say titles. But Tyndall checks into the game here as well for McElhaney. I mean, one of the things about the just about the last play that you notice is that we have a completely different group of girls out on the floor, but they were all still very aggressive on the offensive board. And that comes down to coaching. Drive inside by Rupert towards the goal off the backboard and it's good. Cuts this lead to 30. Mentor, she brings the ball up strongly up the floor. Opposite corner for Young, no good. Another rebound for Irwin, loses the ball down low, falls over it, nearly hurts her ankle there. But Zion Tatum makes it the other, the other direction. My apologies for the stumble on the wording. Tatum, she'll take another three point try. She's had three so far in this quarter. Well, not in this quarter, the last two minutes of this quarter. Here's Irwin, drives hard, step through move, nearly loses it. That could have gone off as a pass as well. But Irwin will head to the free throw line and knock down two free throws. Katie Irwin, we mentioned she was a standout player over the academy, coached by a head coach. I was about to say his first name. I forgot his first name. I know his name is Coach Ainworth. I think his first name is Aaron, possibly. I've never actually asked him that. And also Jessica Boyd, a former player here with the Eagles. She actually broadcasted the first game with me when she got her first career points. They were also at the charity stripe as well. She hit the first attempt and knocks down the second as well. Pushes this Eagles lead. Twist, turnaround jumper, no good. Geisler has it, here's Menzer. Nine second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Menzer with the ball on the top of the key. Geisler. Drives hard inside, off the backboard. She gets her first points of the night. That was a good move by Holland. Got the ball immediately squared up, saw the open lane, and dribble drive in for the layup. 10 seconds left to go. Coach Sellers received his 200th win yesterday, and he receives win 200, 201, my apologies, and nice styles, leading by, winning this game by 33. Reese gets the last bucket of the game as well. And what a matchup we've been able to see. Dana Wolf with the high man between both teams as well. She ties her career high with 21 as well. And also a lot of dominant performance by many players here tonight, including Lauren Alvarez and Monte Torres. Yeah, there's definitely been uh, some dominant performances by several Lady Eagles. I don't know if you can just pick out just one because there was so many. It was definitely a team effort tonight that gave the Lady Eagles this big of a victory. Thank you so much for joining us for these past two games, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back next time, I believe, on the 28th. Here at this, I believe, is a guys and girls game. Don't remember what specifically the game is, but until then, the Lady Eagles will be going off on the road playing Trinity Baptist and Bob Jones, and I believe Tacoa Falls is the last game for that one. Please enjoy some highlights provided by our video department, but until then, I'm Alvin Chapman, alongside with Brittany Paddock, and we will see you the next time.